Hey, Danny, do you remember your papers call when we were stuck in here for about three hours? Jenny's papers call? Oh. The Stodon car. She never told anybody about it until we got pulled by the old mill. <laughs> Did you know this car was Stodon? No, no, no. <laughs> He's coming back tonight and we're all asleep in the car and he goes, come on boys, you're coming down the station. He goes, what for? And he goes, the car's nicked. An old pair for a change the number plate tonight and knocked the shoulder tonight, you know. But they kept us in there all night and let us go. But they, <coughs> he was decent though, because like the old pants didn't decent, like, you know, they done the movie and all that. Which we didn't know, you know. He ain't even been in the court for that yet, has he? No, he's still in the man, isn't he? Sort of stay in the middle. Don't you know, don't other cars force around. It's too long going. Water Street's up there, right? Uh, we'll see if we get a place up Water Street. Uh, I'll pass it over. You can park up there quite easily, just past the marquee in a bit. Usually plenty of places up there. Just look at this kid's look. Right there on a push bike. It's all right. <laughs> Oh, Never had a job, never had a car. You left school, but you didn't get that far. Always on the dull, never had work. Cheers, Maggie, I feel a jerk. One of Maggie's millions, the national debt gets more. 
She must be forking out billions to carry on feeding the poor. You can meet us all over the place, saying the country's a big disgrace. What we need is another war. Let off the atom bomb, kill the poor. Get me a job, get me a car, buy me a lager up at the bar. All I want is a normal life, free of debts and worry and strife. There are no winners in a war, everyone loses something. Yeah, right. Graffiti massage. stick together, you know what I mean? It's something to identify with. And that's why a lot of people don't like skinheads, because they're frightened, because they realise that they are a force, you know what I mean? That they all stick together. Jeans. So if I just put a bit of bleach in there, I'll go white again, wouldn't I? Yeah, right. I'm just putting... I'm just putting my jeans in with this stuff, all right? And then he's putting all his whites in with mine, all his white socks and T-shirts. All right, then. I won't find the bleach. I can't wear mine anymore. Wear what? My bleach is too. Why not? Too short, mate. Why not? It's how it works, isn't it? I'd say it's like music first, and then girls, you know what I mean? Uh, I don't know, you know, football and all that, you know, going out of your mates and all that. Violence just doesn't really come into it, you know. It's just nobody talks about it. The papers pull out the violence being too much, you know what I mean? Nice t-shirt, isn't it? We're both adopted like me and my brother. Because like she was only 16 and like 1959, it won't be on a thing like I'm mad mother of 16. So like she ran away to Brighton and I was born and uh, I was uh, put up for adoption. And uh, in those days, right, uh, my, my dad had been uh, he'd been working in Edinburgh University with X-rays. And the doctor told them that, you know, better be careful not to have children in case they were deformed. So, like, they adopted me, and then they adopted my brother. Um, he, he just comes round and, you know, slags off my mum whenever he comes round, you know, and shouts at her and all that. Because he's learned all these new words at college or whatever, you know, and he thinks he's really big. He's, he, he, went, he went to Charterhouse. I went to a good school. Got his spelled done. I went to Safer College. I hated it. Going down, lad, and my brother kept going up. Everything I did was worse, and he always kept doing better things. It was sort of like split. I went one way, he went the other way. I'm the black sheep of the family, but I'm the most loved. Sort of thing, you know what I mean? Oi, is that all I'm getting for 10p? <laughs> I'll bang it. Can you bang it? The 10p's gone through. Yeah, we'll put it under and bang it well. Oh, it's empty. Fuck. Can you fill it up? Can you fill it up? Yeah, we've got time to tell you now. We have to go and buy a photo now. <laughs> <laughs> um, when I was at this public school, you know, I, the, the way they teach you, that they teach you is that you're never going to be on the dole. You're never going to be poor, you know what I mean? They teach you so that when you leave school, you've got this... You feel... You, you look down on everybody, you know what I mean? I mean, like, my, my brother goes around calling people plebs and working class and all that, which is really pathetic, you know. That's how he's brought up, you know, it's really... makes me sick. I laugh at him, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I see the head boy that was at the school. Oh, I'll beat him up. Look, excuse me. There's only a little bit of colour on that out of the white one. Take that chance. Take that chance. You're using bleach, my love. Take that for this chance. Get 
then, then I got this guy I went to this sort of like special school. Seven people in the class. Then then a lot of, I sort of when I left that, you know, I sort of like fell in with the wrong crowd of people, you know. And sort of uh, started thieving and all that and uh, me and my mate got drunk one night and uh, we was gonna burgle our next door, my, my next door neighbours. So I, I ended up burgling my mum like nicking the money out of her house. Yeah, I got to a court and everything. I got two years probation. And uh, I got two years probation and I was sort of like put in care in the hostel. All right. Okay. All right. Yeah. I, I think I think all this thing about adoption is bad because I mean so, somebody's bothered to adopt you and look after you for 20 odd years, you know what I mean? And care for you and all that and love you like their own child. What's the point of going, sort of kicking them in the face and going to find your real parents? I mean, I wonder sometimes. You know, but I'd, ne I'd never go around there. And my mum was 16, my real mum. I mean, so I've got two mum now, I was watching that. 55. So <laughs> and my real mum was 16 as well. Was, I don't know where she was. I don't care. Sorry, is that what you're trying? You're not sure. I've got mine. I've got a really bad night, I suppose. Huh? Because I've got mine. I've got a really bad night. She's lovely. Huh? She's lovely. <laughs> She's lovely, Mum. Um, I think you always take it for granted that they're going to be there, you know what I mean? And then one day they're going to die. Uh, I'll get plenty of money, I think. It's like that's just an important thing, you know what I mean? My, my brother's always saying, like, oh, when mum and dad die, I'm getting money and all that, you know what I mean? Which is, mm -hmm. Yeah, which is stupid, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and like my mum says to me, we never have an argument, she goes, and when I die, I'm going to leave you nothing. Uh, I was like, oh, please, mum. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, I can't explain that, because I'm... Your mum will leave you nothing. She hates you. I know. Nah, she doesn't want you all right, but she wouldn't worry all the time, would you? Who's Paul living in flat? Yeah. I've got his money. Eh? I've got his money. Yeah. No. Serious? Oh, I've had a few fights. I've had nothing really that serious except for my back, really. And another turn in. this block. Now I'm still that was about a year back. That was at a disco, and then that's when I turned skinhead, and I went up there with some mates, and a fight broke out. I tried to keep it out of there, I didn't want to know. I went downstairs to the end of the stairs, and I turned around to see what was happening. Somebody shouted me from the top of the stairs. I turned around, and someone came up and put a knife in my back. Yeah, I have four coins. Yeah? Coins. No. Do you live in here? No, I don't live in here. Oh, next one, next one, second floor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, now I've got punched low. That's going to catch up to me when I'm older, isn't it? I'm going to feel pains in my back and everything, can I? That's what the doctor said to me anyway. Hello, it's Roy there. Who's this? It's Andrew. Andrew, you want Roy? Yeah. Hello? Hello? Roy? Yes? Uh, Look, you saw your message this morning on the answering machine. What's all this about the police? Yeah, you know, it's not, you know, it's about the stabbing thing. It came up today. You know I prosecuted that bloke. I don't know. You haven't told me you prosecuted anybody. Well, Ted knows about it. I mean, it's been going for about a year. You know when I got stabbed? Yeah, well, how comes you only knew on Saturday? Because that's when he phoned me up for some reason. The witnesses only knew on a Thursday. He let me know Saturday, Saturday night. Honestly, I'll give you his number. Yeah, how comes you had a sore throat Saturday as well? I did, I was ill, honestly. You was ill? Yeah, I wasn't pulling your leg, honestly, I was ill. So, uh, well, have you finished this case now? Yeah, well, it's been adjourned. Oh, 
Why has he been adjourned? I don't know, because he pleaded not guilty or something. So now you've got to go to court all over again? I don't know, but yeah, within the next two weeks, I think. Jesus Christ. All right, then. Where well, are you now? Well, I'm at home now. Well, what's happened? Uh, he's out working. Yeah. So what shall I do then? You've got to start with him today and I'll call him and tell him to pick you up in the morning. All right then. Hey! Hey! It's coming out, isn't it? <laughs> oh, come and have a look at this. Quick <laughs> look. Oh, John, yeah. Blue bag, look. I used to sniff glue. I don't know why I've done it. It's just something you like to try out a few times. You might get hooked on it for a while. Are you going over there? No. We was doing it once downstairs. My dad came in and he sort of caught us at it. He wouldn't talk to me for about two, three weeks after that. And, you know, I really felt low and everything. What? It's asking you got your stuff on you. You, you know, so it's up to you, you know, pull yourself together or, or I never want to know you again, so I just, you know, I gave it up. It used to make you go back to things like uh, good things you, that happened to you in life, do you know what I mean? <laughs> this was in um, a hotel that we were staying in in Paris. It's fair, mate. <laughs> you see him? Yeah. You see him? Oh, you go. Come out with me. See, goblin people on about me. This was a, about... This is where the church was. This is where the bloke came up and had a proper go at us. I filmed him having a go at us. So he still started kicking oh, the church. Oh, they started playing with his car, so... Yeah. There it is. Yeah. See the bloke come out, starting to his mate. <laughs> <laughs> little, little fatty brown. Yeah. Really yes, see the bloke having a gun at us. Look. Oh, that's some French punk we met over there. He's a skinhead now. His name's Patrick. See him? And the one with the beard, he's doing life in prison. Killed someone. Charged under explosives act and then the terrorist act and all that 1975 and all that shit. And then, like, was that in court, right? In case this missed the game, wasn't it? Mm. You know what I mean? It's, it's just a waste of time and public money, isn't it? Pathetic. Mm. 
She's trying to keep us at the West End, don't they? Mm. Oh, yeah, in the summer, they, they, they hate you going out the West End, do you know what I mean? All the tourists and all that, you don't know? don't like the tourists seeing you. Oh, yeah, 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 you know, the lot pretend you don't exist sort of thing. Same with anybody, you know what I mean? The only time the police have ever been all right was at South Hall, I think. Mm. That was all. Because we helped them? It's because we helped them. If we had helped them, they'd have got battered. Because we never liked running from the... Well, you know, people what was from petrol bombs. I mean, you know, we didn't run, right? They was running. And when we would come out and help them, right, they stood. And they was going, you know, thanks a lot and all that, you know. And then the next day, you know, they, they can't admit that they can't do their own job, so they sort of like send the papers like that. But that was all our fault and all that. I don't really blame them that way. I think it's just the fucking papers. It looks better for them to print it skinned with chucking petrol bombs. Oh, yeah. Because if they say it was a fucking Pakistanis, right, who's going to believe that? It looks better when we get the blame done, you know what I mean? Yeah. It just, just went true. It's true. I mean, if we got never, I mean, my mate, right, got years was involved right. in a right in Battersea, right? He got four months, all right, for having a bottle in his hand, all right? And yet, what, what about all, 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 all the, you know, blacks and all that that get caught in the rights? You know what I mean? They just let him off. You know what I mean? In the interest of racial I mean, harmony, I mean, right? It's racial harmony, but it's going too much on their side, you know what I mean? Which is unfair. What about us? It's our country, isn't it? I mean, you won't have it, you know what I mean? Because what, what, whatever they say, they'd always be like, you know. You'll, you'll never get racial harmony because there's, there's always people that, you know, will never get on with the other kind. They've got too many people looking after them, ain't they? You know what I mean? They can see, go to these bodies and everything and if, voice their complaints. Yeah. We ain't got anywhere to go. Mm Yeah, they're sort of more reggae, ain't they? Then? A lot of the kids nick the covers. Have they? Mm. Oh, well, You've got to sort them all out, <laughs> see what's missing. Used to be scared, didn't you? Yeah, when, when in you, my heyday. <laughs> when you were young? Yeah. Right, 30 years ago. Didn't know that was Yeah, not 30 years, are yeah. you? Norman Bates, Norman Bates, Norman Bates. Who's this? Mind Norman... you, the girls were better then. Were they? Yeah, they didn't look so butch. Butch? Yeah. yeah. I thought they had feather cups, you know, and they wore their trousers longer. Are you listening? No. <laughs> you want to be? Mm. Yeah. Sound like engine reservation. No, no, no. Mm. They never wore boots either. They, they wear moccasins. Mm. They say you don't wear moccasins. What? Rockabillies wear moccasins. Yeah, but skinner did two years ago. The about loafers? Uh, Monkey boots? No, not the girls, the boys. Boys used to wear monkey boots. Yeah, and the trousers right up and the braces. Girls won't wear braces. There's better two and there's one or two deaths than all. Eh? There's quite a few deaths than all. Deaths? Mm. What in feet? Fights, yeah. Drownings and all that. Yeah, because it's rockers then, wasn't it? Were you fighting yeah. rockers, were you? Yeah, rockers. But they are chains, weren't they? All chains and... That's it, chains, adults. knuckle dusters, all mm -hmm. that they used to have, yeah. You fake the mods. Um? You fake the mods. No, we were mods, first of all. And then, but the skinheads and mods never fought. Because we are, all were mods. Do and now. Thought, what? Do oh, now. they do now, yeah. Well, skinheads fight the mods. Mods don't fight the skinheads, do they? No. Northern mods do, but not the, uh, London mods ain't respected, are they? Northern mods respected, because they've been mm. mods for years, you know what I mean? And sort of more sort of scooter boys, you know, and they really do up their scooter as well. Yeah. Do you have a scooter? No, I used to ride on the back of them, though. I've had one myself. I'm getting one. Huh? Well, I've been saying I've been going to get one for a year, but... <clears throat> it's never had the cash line, though. We'll get them, Britain. I don't like the best piece. Mm.
Let's try that one. Uh, no, 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 When I was a punk, I was a punk for a while, and people were scared shitless to go, look, he's got green hair or he's got red hair or whatever, and they really used to stop and stare. But now, I mean, I suppose it's because of the violence associated with it, skinhead's got a greater shock value. But I'd rather put me aggression out through my appearance than through my behaviour. I mean, there's, there's geezers round here who look as normal as they come, and they're real bleeding psychos. When everyone's categorised, every bank manager looks at some his pinstripe of his briefcase, and the social workers all wear kickers and like air and jumpers or whatever, and they've all got their own little certain sort of uniform, but they don't get picked out because it's an acceptable uniform. Well, I can't remember that. Why? Well, uh, could be right. I think that. Why? Turn up follows do. Well, I applied for the police force. And that all fell through due to one reason or another. And I applied for the fire brigade and sent off nothing. I applied for the army as well. But I mean, like, I had quite a good education, yeah? And oh, they wouldn't take me as officer material. And I wanted to take me as cannon fodder. I was on the verge of taking eight O-levels. Why should I be given the same rating as a guy who can't read and write? Yeah, right there, Brown. Don't go. I thought on the top there. I don't know if that's to you, but I wouldn't have done like something else. Don't point at me at the top of that. Yeah, don't. Eh? Don't have to show, does it? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I wouldn't say I'm working clock. I'd say, to a certain extent, I am, due to the way I live and the area I live in. But. I mean, I come from a sort of the average middle-class, semi-detached background, you know, my dad's a civil servant, I don't mind admitting it. You know, the mum sort of goes, they go to church and everything. But you're not born into a class. You put yourself in what class you like. What colour should I put in the stars? Green. Green. I think red, actually. Oh, I don't know. Oh, you'd show me the right coat, yeah. Just some red, man. Yeah. You might have some blue ones, actually. You got any blue, Rick? I like that blue. My parents want the best for me because it's just a natural protective thing. They want the best for your own offspring, innit? And therefore, they think I'm wasting myself. I mean, maybe I am. But I feel that's up to me. It's my own choice. I'll do what I like. I've got no worry about getting up for work and, oh, is my work up to standard? Will I get the sack? I mean, no, no one can put me down any further because I'm ready at the bottom, aren't I? Do, 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 do. <laughs> Politics just holds no interest for me. But obviously I've I've been attacked for political reasons by like West Indians you think who've, who've been mugged into it the same as everyone else. Look, like all geese with long hair are commies and all geese are with skinheads, they're like fascist. I mean, we've got a lot in common with the blacks from the point of view of fact we both get police pressure right and we both get spat on and we can't get jobs and we get kicked out of places. Them for their colour which they can never change, right? And that's for our appearance which we can change. I mean, the strongest thing to be is male, white, middle class, and normal looking, isn't it? Because you've got it all in. People that go out all the dust matches, they're the ones who are true supporters. 
Victorian times and all that, and that now we're just, we're just nothing, you know what I mean? Great Britain shouldn't be Great Britain, it should be pathetic Britain. We're nothing, you know what I mean? I mean, uh, we're patriotic, you know what I mean? I think, I think the young white youth has got to try and get an identity of their own, you know what I mean? Most of them are just content to sit by and let this country slip down. We're, we're living 40 years in the past, you know? We ain't got a bottle to face out in 1982. Like, I, mean, I mean, like people in a situation, you know what I mean, when they're in panic will follow anybody that stands up and they feel as strong, you know what I mean? And like, it will come to the situation sort of when uh, this free party system is going to collapse, you know what I mean? And, and people will be looking for a new, new thing to follow, and then and certain people will move in. This is 1982, it won't be any better for you. You won't get a job anywhere, not unless you grow your hair. There's nothing here for me and you, not in 1982. We will still be Maggie's millions. The national debt will amount to billions. More police attention, more enforced detention. All of this is nothing new, not in 1982. Hairdresser. Don't know how you fancy that. Butcher's improver. Um, two years experience in butchery. Mm. Um, those ones don't supposed to be interested in his child minding. <laughs> Part time cinema receptionist. 